I have a Ring Video Doorbell 2020 version that I installed and I really like it. But after I put it in, I decided that I wanted to change the view of it and angle it down a little bit more so it showed me more of my porch and less of the edge of my yard and the street. So to do that, I ordered a wedge kit from the Ring store on Amazon and it cost me $20 and the kit has everything in it I need to get the job done. Here's what the view looks like from my doorbell now. And you can see that when somebody makes a delivery, can't see much of my porch, can't really see where they left the package or anything like that. And here's the doorbell wedge kit. And on the back of the wedge kit packaging, it says wedge kit for ring video doorbell, second generation. It comes with three wedges and these are all the same size. Each one adds five degrees of angle to your doorbell when placed behind it. And you can stack these so you can either get just five, ten, or a total of fifteen degrees of tilt if you want that much. So you get the three wedges and all the screws you're going to need. There's three each of three different sizes of screws there and three wall anchors. And then there's a little bag with five small screws in there. My doorbell is wired, so just to be safe, I'm going to turn the power off to it at the breaker box. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the screws at the bottom of the doorbell. And I still have the reversible screwdriver that came with my ring doorbell. One end has a Torx head on it, and the other end has a Phillips. And the bottom screws take that Torx head. I'm going to take both of the screws out and then take the doorbell off. I can just pull that out away from the wall. I'm going to pull the wires out a little bit and then take the wires off the terminals on the back of the doorbell. That takes the Phillips head, so I'm just going to turn this bit around and put it so the Phillips head is sticking out. Okay. And now I'm going to remove the four screws that are holding the base plate onto the wall. And these are also Phillips head screws. Okay, we've got the plate off. This is the side of the wedge that mounts to the wall because it's going to go flush up against your wall where your doorbell was. So I'm going to take the base plate I just took off and make sure it matches up with the screw holes in the wedge, and it does. Now I have to decide just how many of these wedges I really need to use, whether I want to add a 5, 10, or 15 degree tilt to my doorbell. To help me figure that out, I put the base plate on the back of the doorbell and then I put those on one wedge and then I'm going to hold that up against the wall in place where it would be and see what the view looks like on my phone. And you might want to get somebody to help you with this part. I've got my phone on top of there and I can see a little more of my porch but I think I need more than just the five degrees that the one wedge gives. So I'm going to try two. I'm going to rubber band those together. Now let's see what the view is with 10 degrees additional tilt. That is definitely better. I can see more of the porch area and just the very top of the overhang on the porch. I tried it with all three of them and decided that 15 degrees is just too much. So I'm just going to use two of the wedges and go with 10 degrees of added tilt. This is how it's going to look on the wall after I attach it. There's the two wedges put together and then the base plate will go on here and then the doorbell on top of that. One thing you have to consider too, the more wedges you add, the more wire you need that you can pull out or that sticks out so it can go out far enough to attach to the back of the doorbell. I don't have a whole lot of wire there and I can't pull any more out so it might be a little bit difficult to attach those screws on the back. And since I didn't think my wires would be long enough to fit through the wedges and the base plate and leave me enough room to attach them to the doorbell, I added some wire to the existing wires so I have a little more length and there'll be enough room left in the wedges for me to push these back in out of the way. So I'm going to need a screw long enough to go through these two wedges and into the wall securely. The wedge kit came with three different lengths of screws and with two of them stacked together I'm using one of the medium sized screws for the top hole and then the smaller screw for the bottom hole. And by doing that they both come out about the same distance through the back of the wedge. I'm going to mount the two wedges to the wall now. Feed your wires through the hole in the middle of the wedge. The medium size, the longer of the two screws I'm going to use, goes in the top. I'm going to put that in first through this hole in the wedge. And I got it in there most of the way with the powered screwdriver. I'm going to use this ring screwdriver to get it down a little closer. 
I'm going to use this little level and put it on the top of the wedge. And since I didn't tighten down the screw all the way, I can move the wedge back and forth if I need to to get it level. And make sure when you're doing this that your wedges are fitting tight against each other if you have more than one like I do. So I've got both of those screws in and I'm going to finish tightening them by hand. Don't want to crack that plastic. The wedge kit came with these five little screws and they're to attach the base plate to the wedge itself. We're going to use four of those right now to put the base plate on. So make sure you have the bracket the right side up. Mine has a little shelf here. Put the wires through it. And screw the base plate onto the wedge. Now we're going to attach the wires to the back of the doorbell and mount the doorbell to the bracket. And you can see there's going to be enough room to push these wire nuts and the excess wire back into the wedge and out of the way. The wires are on. Make sure this is catching on top and push down on the bottom. And the last thing to do is reverse my screwdriver so I've got the Torx and put those two screws back in the bottom of the doorbell. Turn your breaker back on and then you're all set to go. And here's my new view on my doorbell. I can see both chairs on the porch off to the right. I can see more of my actual porch so I'm pretty happy with that. Adding the wedge to my ring doorbell was pretty easy to do and it made a definite improvement to what I can see through my doorbell. Let me know in the comment section below if you've done this, if you have any hints or tips on what would make this easier to do, and let me know just how you like your ring doorbell. Thanks for watching and have a great day.